It's a big story. Citigroup settling with the Securities and Exchange Commission in several states for saddling customers with untradable bonds. City buying back about seven and a half billion in auction rate securities from individuals and, quote, restoring liquidity to more than 2,600 institutions holding about 12 billion of the instruments. Joseph Fichera is chief executive of Sabre Partners, an advisory firm here in New York. He joins us now. Joseph, uh, why did the SEC choose Citigroup, or did Citigroup itself choose uh, to do this settlement, uh, to settle first? Are they the biggest player in this industry? They were one of the biggest players, along with UBS, in terms of the underwriting of the securities over the, probably the past uh, uh, 20 years, and particularly in the past five years, because of their strong dominance in the municipal market, which was the big player of about $180 billion out of the $330 billion that was uh, issued at the top of the market. Now, you were one of the few voices out there sort of before the meltdown saying investors have undue risk. Is this the worst case scenario as you see it? The worst case, this is a great scenario in terms of trying to get some re resolution for about, I think the SEC estimated about 38,000 individual investors and 2,600 institutions to provide some light at the end of the tunnel in terms of getting uh, liquidity. It even provides uh, some rebates for the issuers and the taxpayers who had to refinance these things because of, uh, of the crisis. Um, so this settlement is positive, but it does show that there was uh, uh, clearly problems in the market going back for a very long period of time. Though, the, interesting enough, this settlement just covers August 1st through February, and the SEC has obviously left open the door for other uh, investigations, and lots of investors uh, are still stuck. This is only about 10 percent of the outstanding uh, market, so uh, like I say, light at the end of the tunnel, but not a well, full resolution. Given the size of City, back to the question I asked you earlier, uh, does it sort of set a, a pattern that the other banks can't avoid? They're going to have to settle on similar terms? Uh, clearly, a precedent like this with a major firm uh, uh, will put that kind of uh, pressure uh, on, on, on people. Uh, clearly, but we must ask right now, we don't, we know the outlines. There's God and the devil are in the details, so we have to sort of see who, how they define certain things. It doesn't seem to cover the closed-end bond funds, which are uh, about 50 or 60 billion, uh, and people are, are stuck in there in the, in the PIMCOs and the Veens and the Black Rock, Rocks. There's tons of student loan issuers still out there, so uh, it's going to be a precedent. I don't see how people uh, don't sort of have to get on board with something like like this, but there are still things that need to be resolved. Even the SEC noticed that there will be arbitration still be going forward. But investors should be happy that this, because they want, I think, leadership, not litigation. And together with the Attorney General of New York, Cuomo, taking a very strong stand, um, and with the SEC, they have provided that, that leadership. And I'm glad, happy that, that Citigroup uh, set the precedent. Kind of keying off what Michael just said, I mean, for some of the other banks, UBS, you alluded to earlier, possibly after Citigroup or along with Citigroup having the biggest exposure. Based on what Citigroup, the fine it's paying or how it's settling, what do you think UBS is going to have to do? Uh, they are big in the student loans. That's a, that's a more problematic uh, issue. I don't know what they, they obviously were willing to take. Uh, the public uh, filing of a charges a against them, and the emails, which are pretty astonishing, both in, within UBS and the Merrill Lynch emails. And I could think that Citigroup and others right now, one of the great things about settling here is you don't have that discovery coming out, and you won't be, you won't have taken such a hard hit. Uh -huh. uh, in terms of your reputation and such. UBS got out of the municipal bond market, though they're still managing lots of people's uh, funds and other, other, other things. Um, I don't know what the dollar amount would be for UBS. Uh, they said that they're going to fight the other two uh, 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 complaints against them by, by the state. Um, and we'll just have to see. I mean, we still got there's a whole list of big banks that, are, uh, uh, that have to go city, down. Cities are agreeing to buy back seven and a half billion of the bonds. They're going to help restore liquidity to 12 billion more. But that, how they do that hasn't been uh, settled yet, yet. No, that isn't. And that's a big issue. And one of the things that have been, uh, I've been an advocate for and a number of people that this market needs more transparency to, in order to restore confidence and liquidity. It needs more co competition and going forward. Uh, proposals have been, been put forward to the MSRB uh, 
and they've said that they will bring some more transparency, but said that they were delaying that until January, but turns out the head of the MSRB is a Citibank uh, um, employee. Perhaps they'll rethink that and accelerate <laughs> that now, we hope. Uh, that is why it is only a light at the tunnel. You still will be having auctions every day. You will still be having billions of dollars being up. You still have a number of issues with people. And for the market to work, it needs both transparency and competition. I guess, I guess uh, given what you're saying, I have to ask, and, and this settlement today, and, you know, uh, you add all the numbers together, you get $20 billion. Why do we have this market? Why do we need this market? Wouldn't it be um, a bit derelict for a municipality to get into it now after all that's happened? Well, d there's nothing wrong with an auction if it was really an auction. I think what we're discovering was that the product in the auctions, the way they were managed, uh, and, and conducted were not really auctions. They were disguised as uh, remarketings rather than... Uh, uh, well, what's I mean, the benefit of having auction rates as opposed to just issuing municipal securities and seeing who'll buy them? Well, it is the co it's the question of cost, the yield curve. You do issue fixed rate versus this was more of a floating rate. Um, if you try to do floating rate now, which they call variable rate demand bonds, where you would have a long-term security with a hard put, uh, or, re or remarketing. You have to get a letter of credit so most of the time and liquidity facilities. Those are costs. Liquidity is very expensive these days. It is, there's ongoing fees. There's still risks in, in terms associated with that. Okay. So the replacement security is, well, here you are here. <laughs> what do you go to? Right. How much does it cost? Who should bear that burden? Should it be the taxpayers, the customers of, of the hospitals and, and universities? No. A right. uh, lot still needs to be worked out here, but this is we'll, a, a, an unprecedented and great first step. We'll keep uh, our eye on it then. I'm sure there'll be a lot more news. Joseph Ashera, thank you for coming in today. To Happy explain. to help.